Well, my name is Sven Ruppert, working for the company Codecentric. Anyone who does not know what Codecentric is? Good. Well, okay, well, um, if you have a good test, you're asking, hmm? yeah? Anyone, is here someone who knows Codecentric? So, now I think a few people will so, show up. And now you are not knowing it, so exceptionally we'll start. Yes, it's a small company in Germany. Go to the website, but please read only one page, page per day. Otherwise, it could be that you immediately want to start applying for a job. So, because Codecentric is a quite cool company. So, well, let's, let's start. Um, we want to talk a little bit about testing. Who is developing desktop applications? Oh. Only one. <laughs> oh no, a few more. Okay, but it's every time the same. You're testing, 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 testing. So basic testing, framework testing, and testing with CDI. We want to have a small look at it. And so we want to say, I will divide all the testing areas in three, only for this talk. I know it's not completely right, but we have unit testing, so how to test an UI component. We have this integration test, we don't want to speak about this because it's a little bit bigger. And we have the system test. In this case, system test means we are testing something like an UI workflow, a part of the application. That's all. <coughs> so it's a definition for this talk, not in general. Well, manual testing, you know, you have to test the whole application. You're creating a test plan updates a plan for each commit, and then testing and testing and testing every release. So I think everybody has done it once. Anyone, anyone here that really likes this kind of testing? Good. <laughs> okay, next one. So this means if you want to work in a CI, continuous integration or continuous delivery in environment, you have done this for every commit and test each commit. So everybody would agree that this is not a good thing to do. So now we want to see um, which kind of tools and libs are available for testing, for example, desktop application with Java FX. They are something like Selenium. So only two or three guys raise their hand uh, after I ask who is developing Desktop application. So everybody else must develop web applications. Oh, okay, good. But all the others, uh, I think you know a little bit about Selenium. You you start the application in your browser, then you're clicking a little bit around, recording all this stuff, and say, okay, this you can replay, 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 replay. Something like this is QF test. It's an application for desktop applications, uh, a test environment. So I have something like your own IDE. And then you can start your application and can go there and say, okay, first I will click here, then I put something in this field, then I click there, and I want to test if something will change. This is okay, but you see, the price per developer is not so small. So you have to pay for every developer license around 2,000 euro. Um, this, well, you, money you must have, and there's no JUnit approach. This is the other thing. So you really have your own IDE, you're starting this application and you have to create test plans, describing them in XML or whatever. So this means the CI, continuous integration, integration is uh, not really working well. So you have a few of these products, but this is not really what a developer wants to have in their daily work. So the next one would be something like JamiFX. So JamiFX is a tool that was developed for the first version of JavaFX, then up to JavaFX 2.2. It's more or less like a JUnit approach, but the last commit was over two years ago. So this project is death. Don't look at it. So the next one you could find, if you want to have more like JUnit-based tests for components, is Automaton. Automaton is always written for JavaFX 2, but it's implemented in Groovy. Who's able to write Groovy programs? Really? You like it? Are you sure? Okay. Well, the problem here is that it's written in, no, it's not a problem that's written in Groovy, but the problem is that you could use this test tool only if you're using a JDK from 7 update 55 until 8 update 11. If you're using something else, it's crash. Well, so 
you can't really use it if you are moving forward. Uh, it's not so on the active development and the only good thing is if you have Swing and Java FX mix, you can use this tool for mixed tests and your test plan is written in Groovy. But what else we have? Um, maybe I should mention there's a problem with OSCI, so they're cut off. Uh, a little bit. Not the whole CI is visible. There's a C homepage, and I've seen it two slides earlier. There was the problem too. We should yeah. take care of it. So, so all the cool animation that we've done for our presentation and the slides are on the right side. And you can't cut up. It took hours to, to do this awesome stuff. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay, one, one spec. Uh, it's this automation homepage. Uh, there's a recommendation if you really want to test test FX, they recommend uh, Java FX, they recommend test FX as framework. Well, I, I totally agree because I'm committed of test FX, um, but later a little bit more. So there's one other tool. So automation is not really working. So there's only one other tool, Marvin FX, for example. It's open source. And there's something that is not completely the same as TestFX. For example, we have the supervisor. Your supervisor, you know. So you can define here, like a programmer, a node supervisor. You can define rules in a programmatical way. You can interact with your component, then test if everything is going right. So this is more in a direction a developer want to test components or applications because you can write plain Java code. And if you're starting with refactoring, <coughs> then the test will be refactored too. So, he was writing Marvin FX. This is the only difference to what we are looking now to test FX. And so we agreed that Marvin FX and test FX will be merged. So, if you really want to write Java FX component, there's only one framework that is on an active development called test FX. Um, <coughs> test FX is Available for Java FX2 if you're using JDK 7. We have a long term support branch. So some features will be backported if needed. And the active branch is only for Java FX8 for the active one. So this means we have here the possibility to test single components. For example, you're writing a whole application and all the other test frameworks think that you have to start the whole application and then testing against this application. But you're writing a special button, for example, and you only want to test this button. Then you can do it here with a JUnit test. You have a JUnit test, he will show a little bit how it looks like in code. And then you can test only this single component. This is, I think, a good approach for incremental test environments to, to test step by step the whole application. If you need some logical uh, stuff, for example, I want to test if this is in a behavior with this option and this kind of data, then you have the full support of Hamcrest uh, Ham matchers. So you can define a lot of logical stuff for your project itself if the stuff that's there not uh, enough. So the good thing is if a test will fail, you will get a screenshot. This makes sense, you have a few hundred tests you start the test and going out for a coffee, and then coming back and see, okay, test one, 10, and 11 failed, and then you have exactly for this screenshots. So you can read the log files, and you see what was going on on your screen. This is quite cool. And one thing I want to recommend is that Oracle itself is using TestFX internally to develop their JavaFX components. So I think, uh, yeah. It's not, not, not so bad. So, please, sure give me. So, we have to switch this one, otherwise, you don't. Yes, this one. Okay. Okay, so as Sven said, TestFX is the tool you should use when uh, doing JavaFX test, and therefore, we want to yeah, show some examples how to use TestFX. Okay. Uh, Let's think about this small application. It's very easy. We just have two labels, two text fields, and a button. It's a login dialog, for example. And so we want to test this login dialog. And when we don't want to test it by hand and type everything in it and click login, uh, check different usernames, password, if it's working, all this stuff, what we can do is we can write a test by using TestFX. So with TestFX, this is some pseudocode to First of all, show 
how it might look like. So in TestX, you can automate the user input. So you can say, okay, I want to click on the text field. So it's a username, then want to type Steve, then click on the password field and type Duke Forever, for example, as a password. Click the login button and then I assert that something happens or I don't know, the data model has been changed. In this case, I say just, okay, I assert that the dialog node exists. So this is a very simple example how you can code a UI test. Okay, so now we want to see how we can do this by using TestFX. First of all, so I think everyone knows unit test. With uh, TestFX, you can just write unit test. It's, it's a simple unit test, and what you should do is, what's different to normal unit test, you must extend a class, and the class is called GUI test. That's an internal class of TestFX, and by extending this class, the TestFX bootstrap will run whenever you run your unit test. So by doing so, you can just write with a test annotation tests in this class. Okay, the big question is, how should we bootstrap our UI for this test? And um, to do so, the GUI test class has an abstract method called get root node. And this root node, you must override this method, and this um, method will return the root of your UI that you want to test. So if you want to test a complete application with TestFX, you normally should return your window in this case. If you want to test, I don't know, maybe a button or a specific slider, spinner, or text field, you can just return your button or your text field in this method to write tests for this component. By doing so, you can test, uh, as Sven already said, a single component or a subset of your application or your whole application to, for example, test a workflow. Okay, and then, once this is done, you can just simply write a test like we've seen in the pseudocode. So there are methods like click or type and all this stuff. They are all defined in the GUI test class that we extend, and by doing so, you can just use them in your tests. Ah, and yeah, it's a fluent API that is provided by TestFX, so you can write everything in one line. And so the question is, how can we find a component? So for example, a button that we want to click. There are different ways how you can click on a button, for example. So JavaFX supports CSS. By doing so, you can use a CSS selector to find the button, for example. Or you already have the button as an object, then you can just pass the object to the clip method. Or you can type the text of the button. Then he searched the complete UI tree to, to find the button with this text and then clicks it. You can click directly on a coordinate on the screen. Or you can define a matcher. For example, this is a matcher that is defined by Lambda where we say, okay, we want to click the button that is the cancel button. So then the test FX checks all buttons and whenever this will return true, the button will be clicked. Okay, and next to this, there are some more extended methods to find uh, components. So this is an ex example. We have a text field that we want to um, search for, and maybe we have a very big application with several screens and all this stuff, and we have several text fields that have the same CSS ID, for example, in it. Then we can do it like this, and we can search for the text field in a defined panel. Uh, you can yeah, do a lot with the API. Okay, so we want to show a short example. Let me see, oh, it's this one. Okay, oh, I have a written an application, it's this one, so it has a label and a button, and when I click the button, the text of the label will change. That's all. Okay, I have a very small start application class for JavaFX, and I have this UI class where the complete application is defined, and so I have the label with the text, 
with some CSS ID, then I have some button with some text with some CSS ID and with an action handler that will change the text of the label. Okay, um, for our test, we create a class, it's just tests at the moment, and we need to extend the GUI test class, as said before. Then uh, we need to define the UI component that we want to test. In this case, we want to test the complete UI, so I create a new instance of the UI class, and then I can simply write a test. For example, in this test, I click the button, then I search for the label, and then I check if the text of the label is ta-da. When I run the test, you have seen it, it's working, so the UI will appear on the screen and the mouse will be moved to the button, it will be clicked and all the stuff, so it's working. Okay, um, by doing so in this little example, it was easy. There were just one click, one assert, one check, everything is fine. But in real life, you will have something like that. So you have an application maybe with, uh, I don't know, a flow of five or six screens and you want to test the last screen and then you will start on the first screen, log in and click on any buttons, go to the next screen, go next, 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 all the stuff. And by doing so, first of all, you can't really read it. Yes? You don't know what this test will do because it's much too complex. And on the other side, uh, if you refactor your application, maybe you remove a view in the wizard or in the flow or do something like that, the test wouldn't work. And it's very hard to find the problem in a test like this because it's very big. And in the web, there's a solution for this. It's called the page object pattern. Who knows the page object pattern? Oh, some knows this, perfect. So by, by doing so with the pattern, you will create a class for each of your views. And um, we did the same for, for JavaFX. In JavaFX, we don't have pages, therefore we called it view objects pattern. So it's mainly the same for people who know the page object pattern. It's the same, but for JavaFX. So what we must do is we need to create an object for each view. And Next one. And then in, in these objects, we will define all the interaction that we can do in exactly this view. So maybe I will show a short movie about the application that we want to test. We don't have uh, Wi-Fi here, so I need to record it. It's a music player that access um, iTunes by using web services and then play some music. Or you can search for an artist. Uh, then go into it. Then you have all the tracks, and then you can simply play a track. So that, that is the application. And here we have um, different views. I showed it before. We have the search view, we have the overview, then we have the view of all the tracks, and then we have the play view. And what we want to do is we want to create an object for each of these views. And for example, in the Album view, we can open anything or we can check the count if there are, I don't know, five albums or something like that. And in addition, we can uh, define methods for testing, like in this method we assert that a specific album will be shown in the view. And by doing so, all those click, click, type, type, type methods will be inside this methods and not inside the test. Um, and then the next step that you must do is the methods that you defined uh, shouldn't uh, return void. They should return the view that will be returned, uh, that will be shown once the method is called. So if you have just a check method, it will return this. But if you, for example, click a button that will open another view, you will return the next view that is shown on the screen. And by doing so, you can write tests like this. So this is, for example, a test where we open the search view, then uh, 
type in rise against. By doing so, the album overview will be opened, then we open the album, the pragmatic market. If this isn't there, the test will fail. And then once this is opened, we will check if the track count is 12. So, and this is really readable, you know? If, if you change anything in your application, you just need to change one method call here. And the internally is, for example, in this open album. In this case, there is, okay, go to the list with the mouse cursor and click search for the album, the pragmatic market, and click on it. That's defined in this method. But this method can be reused in, I don't know, 100 tests or something like that. And it's really readable. Okay, maybe we show a short example. So here I do exactly the same. I have defined some tests, and this, for example, search view, search twice against, open album, a third contains track, a third contains track, and so on. Or this one, uh, let me show another one. Search for us against, open album, check track count, for example. And uh, when go into the open album, you will see that there is a click with searching for the text and, and all the stuff. It's inside of these methods. And now I can simply just run the test. And it's working. I won't show all the tests, there are many the same, some go to the preview and all the stuff, but we don't have enough time. So, back to the slides. And, okay, by doing so you can create a JavaFX application and test it, or you can create uh, just a JavaFX component, like a button, and test it. But next to this there are some application frameworks for JavaFX, uh, like Open Dolphin or DataFX, I would prefer this too if I would create a JavaFX application. Or MVVMFX or AfterburnerFX, so it's AfterburnerFX, you can't see it. And um, when creating a big JavaFX application, like a business application or enterprise application, something like that, uh, it would be pr best practice to use one of these frameworks because a lot of basics is defined in these frameworks, like how to do REST call, how to handle background threads, and all this stuff how to define flows, for example. And yeah, we want to test this too, and therefore Sven and I uh, did two examples. The first one is uh, for, for DataFX, how you can test this. So most of the people here don't know JavaFX, so I think no one will know, da uh, don't know JavaFX, so I think no one will know DataFX. Um, DataFX is a framework for JavaFX that handled, um, on the one hand, background threads for REST calls and all this stuff. And on the other hand, you can define flows with um, data of XCI, like you know from JSF, for example. And um, by doing so and testing JavaFX, uh, we created um, a special class, it's called the flow test. And with this class, you can simply test a complete JavaFX flow. Next one. And what's interesting is um, DataFX supports dependency injection. And in the example that we have seen in the iTunes demo, um, there we have a data model. It's the iTunes data model. We have the search met method that will be called once you search for an artist, and then it will do a REST call to the iTunes server. And normally, we, want, we don't want to do this in a test because uh, we don't know if the server is there or something like that. We don't want to use the REST call because we want to uh, use with, uh, we want to test with test data. Maybe uh, they add any data or remove anything at iTunes and all other tests wouldn't fit because we assert that there are, I don't know, 12 tracks or something like that and whoop, there are only 10 tracks once a month later and the test is broken. Therefore, therefore we want to use the REST call and what we can do is uh, create a data model for the test that extends the iTunes data model, and by and then we can add some test data instead of calling the REST endpoint. And by doing so, um, we can inject the test data model instead of the real iTunes data model. And in this case, um, the test data model will be used for all the tests, and we will work with static data for this test. Okay. Your turn. Okay. 
So, well, depends injection is uh, mostly used on server side, but you can use it on the desktop uh, client side too. So there's one small tool uh, from Adam Bean after Burner FX. So with this, you can play a little bit and it's a good um, yeah, micro framework. It has three classes, so really easy to read. Uh, but it gives you the first um, hint how you can uh, bootstrap an application with uh, dependency injection. So it's free available and you can check it. It's, I think, on GitHub. Uh, Adam is working quite actively on it, so it will be changed nearly every week. And the good thing is you can inject something in your uh, bootstrapped FX application and the post-construct um, post is working, so you have the minimum lifecycle of CDI, not the full lifecycle. But there are some difference to the normal CDI stuff. So um, you don't have scopes, you don't have producers and all this stuff. And there's one thing you really have to think about. If you're injecting something, it's always in this framework a singleton. So, um, and if you have CDI-based code, you can't mix it with Afterburn FX. But the good thing is, if you're using for small desktop applications, this DI um, bootstrapping, it's working with TestFX fine. So you can use this dependency injection, but TestFX is dealing with it in a normal way. So you can write tests as normal. Then why only using dependency injection if you can use context dependency injection, because with context dependency injection you can do really nice stuff. We want to use mocks if, for example, a service using a service and the service is not available, I want to switch to test mode. And the other thing, you can use exactly the same code for dynamic reconfiguration of your whole application. The nice thing is CDI is uh, working well on the server side and on the client side. For example, we have a pane with a controller and a service that's used. But the service itself is using, by inject, three other services. So service A is using service B is serving C, service C. So this means you want to get rid of this static semantic so, um, service, my service, new service. So you want to have something like inject my service, please. So, but if you have these services there, Normally, everybody thinking with Mokito or something like this, putting the whole thing that is injected and using a complete mock. So, if you don't want to have this, for example, you have only partial. Next one. Something maybe better. Hmm? What are you doing? Yeah, so everyone can read it. Well, it could be, could be, could be, could be. Maybe it's okay. Better. So, if this is a normal situation. So if you have a service, you're mocking the whole service. But with CDI, you can do something else. You could use, for example, a mocked version for this service, but a part of this mocked service using real services too. So this one is real service. But a part of this real service is using a mocked service again. So what does it mean? You can use different combinations of the whole chain that is mocked and not mocked, but how to define this. You can do this with CDI. So it makes sense to bootstrap the whole application with CDI because then, next one please, the production code looks exactly like the test code. So there is definitely no difference in between and you can divide physically completely the test code and the production code. Well, but how you could do this? So. You have, for example, who's using CDI? On server side, client side, whatever. Nobody? Oh, damn. Okay. Well, with CDI you can do something like this. You can write inject and then some magical stuff will happen and there is coming in, uh, an instance of this, for example, interface. To define with my qualifier, you can choose a producer method. So CDI will see, okay, I need an instance of my service here, and I will use this method, create service, because this interface and this interface and this qualifier and this qualifier matching. So that's the basic behavior of this stuff. So now, if you're thinking about this, please, next one, you could say in this create service. So this is what you can see in your production code. And then inside this service, you can make the decision, real service, or mock service, but next one. No. This one you don't want to have something like 
inside your producer if you are in production mode, return service, else doing something else. You don't want to have this whole if then else stuff. So you have to do it in a different way. Yes. So, okay. So, how you can make this decision at runtime or at any time I want to have. This makes, next one. So, you have this qualifier again. Now you have to make the decision. That means that, next one. You have to go to one producer for the real service or you have to decide to go to this one, to the mocked creator. So, both producers are available in a JUnit environment because you have in the class path the JUnit path, the mocked path, and you have the real thing. And now, how to find out which implement, uh, implementation you want to use. Next one. You can use, so if you are not working daily with CDI, maybe this gives you a small hint. You have something that is able to resolve the context of your application. The easiest version of it would be a singleton where you can put a boolean, test mode, yes or no. In real life, you will have a structure of context and it's a little bit more complex. But you will get something like an annotation literal. This is the same like this, but it's an implementation of this one. So this is more or less a special interface and this is the implementation of it. It's typed with a qualifier. So with this, you can use the same to go to the bean manager and say, now I want to have this one. So this resolve will decide somewhere else which kind of annotation literal you're using and then you're selecting exactly this and getting the right instance. So this is the main concept how you can switch with CDI between different implementations at runtime. The magic is in this method how to resolve what is the right context for you. So if you have done this, you can see the uh, basic implementation on an open source project. I will give you the URL, uh, the website later. Then you can see or if anybody um, want to have a little bit more information after the talk, please come to me. I can show you all the stuff or where you can find it. Okay, so if you are able to decide with every request which kind of implementation you could use, you have one good thing. Because if you have an entry point and you have for every service a mocked version and the right version, the productive and the mocked version, you can go through all combinations in different paths. Because for this you will decide, I want to have the Mac mocked version, but he will use this productive one and the next one will use a productive one. Or you are going another path. So you have the whole possibility of combinations and so you can, for example, start with a mocked version in complete order and then step by step you are activating the production version and removing the mocked version. With this you can use, for example, something like this. You have a system and you have an algorithm that's injected <coughs> and it's very fast but consuming a lot of RAM. And then you will detect the context of your system will say, oh, RAM, because a lot of users are now on the system, the RAM will be only a small amount will be free. Then you could switch with the next inject and say, okay, same algorithm, but the implement implementation will be a slow one using less RAM. And if you have enough RAM again, you're switching to the fast implementation. And so both versions can live at the same time. So, and this can you, in the same way, using for, now I'm using a mocked service. So you have always the same paradigm to use this. Okay, so I think the time is done. We had the CDI domo. If someone is interested, he can come to me, I can show you. We have, um, this is, for example, the open source project where I put all the CDI patterns so you can check there the implementation. Feel free to contact me to see this. And if you want to have all these uh, CDI and bootstrapping examples, go to the repository we have created for the Java one. So there's everything you need for the slides. I'm not sure if you have any time. I think we are completely over the time. But if there are any questions, well, everybody's hungry, yeah? Sure. Okay, well, feel free to contact us. Thank you very much.